Dante Fido here, bringing you some early access to a pretty awesome game called Dragonflight. Um, bringing this to you live on Twitch. Um, be uploaded on my YouTube later. So this game is pretty cool. We're gonna just go into some details into it. Uh, just go through chapter one, chapter two, because that's all that's in the game right now. This game just came out on August 31st. Um, first, let's get some of the lore though, because it looks like they're gonna put like a whole lot of stuff into this game and really make it in depth and pretty awesome. So let's see what the lore is. Long before the rise of man, gods roamed the earth, waging endless war. The first dragons were born in this time, monsters forged from the unbridled elements of this earlier world, fire, ice, and lightning. Greatest amongst them was Vermithrax, who, like his kin, embodied the elements of storm. But unlike his kin, Vermithrax also embodied time itself, and with this mastery was deadlier than all who came before or after him. A creature of bottomless avarice and seething guile, Vermithrax grew to challenge the gods who had created him. The pillars of the sky shuddered in the conflict to come, but the gods could not unmake what they had made, for a dragon is a thing of nature. Vermithrax could not be destroyed any more than one could destroy time itself. In the end, the gods aligned against the beast, hewing the monster to pieces even as they themselves were burned by the dragon's endless fire. Each piece was borne away by a ruined god, nine in all, to the far corners of the world, where the shards of Vermithrax would be entombed in mighty keeps, the essence of the beast intact but vastly weakened. Only thus was Vermithrax subdued and the world spared the domination of the cruel beast. With Vermithrax contained, the gods themselves were spent, burned away to faint whispers, and so made way for the rise of men. For a thousand years, the tombs of Vermithrax lay undisturbed, until one day. Dun dun dun! So we will start with Valley of Dragons. And this is a tutorial level, but we'll get you the, the gist of what goes on here. So I am actually playing this on a 360 controller, and I think that's awesome that this game has controller support. That's so freaking cool. Every game should have controller support. So we're just going to fly into all of these. Because at the moment, that is the goal. So you can see it's pretty well detailed, the, the environments look really awesome, the dragon is really, uh, really well detailed, I think. And I think I actually have that, <clears throat> that Y access inverted just because it's a little bit easier to play like that. Yeah, I, I had turned my sensitivity way up. It actually feels like it's not turned up right now. It's not. Oh, wow. I turned it back down for the tutorial. That's crazy. That's interesting. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> All right. The so right trigger is your... Er, yeah, right trigger is your breath, and then left trigger is kind of like your uh, your aim fireball shoot kind of thing. Seems I'm wandering off the path, but that's where it wants me to go. Okay, anyway. Frenchy. The dragon can hover in space, or in place, Elba. Flying backwards, stranger power, so. 
It's also really handy for evading though, so. And you can fly straight up if you tap the hover button. Powerful range attack, which is left trigger. You can't fire that in like, um, I guess you kind of can. That is, uh, you can see this kind of all jumbled up there. The, uh, they had two tutorial things pop up at the same time. Might want to try to fix that. So you hold the trigger for, you know, you don't wait for your power to come back up. The blue bar at the top there. And then hold for three seconds. And this will go down. Trees. You can disintegrate trees and shatter stone walls. The story: ten trees with range attack. Move on. Does this count toward that? It doesn't look like it does. Okay, it does not. All right. This was kind of the part of the tutorial that took me a while to get past the first time. I'm like, okay, so I'll sit here and I'll let this charge up. Okay, let me go forward. Alright, we'll go forward. Somehow that's that went from I'm pretty sure that was only four, but now I'm at seven. So I don't know. And that was ten right there. Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm glad it skips ahead if you had to sit there and kill kill ten trees with that. That would I feel like that would take a while, especially since you gotta charge it all the way up to do it. Um five trees sounds a bit better. I think people adequately know what they're doing by then. <coughs> So there's no narrative for here, you just kind of got to read this. Um, and I feel only you can stop this horror in time. Indeed! An abomination has spun from the Stygian Abyss, neither dragon nor demon, but a binding of the two Baldons. They have attacked the keep. Uh, they have attacked the keep of Balthon. Balthun? I don't know. How do you say your dragon's name? Asdaya? Asdia? I don't know. That keep has stood for centuries, sorcerer. It is one of the nine tombs of the Mithrats, strong as a mountain. The Baldon brood is massive. I don't know, I can't read what that says. Was, was, was unprepared for such an assault. Balthon was destroyed in less than a day. The, reins, the remains of Verth the, the Mithrax are stolen. Now the Balgons fly to the second tomb. The might of the Mithrax is with them. There is no time as dire. Only you are swift enough to thwart their plan. You must retrieve the bones of the Mithrax before they do. You speak of breaking a covenant that has lasted a thousand years, Great Malkan. Grey Mountain, yeah. But the threat is grave. I will bring you the bones of a Mithras sorcerer. But how will you protect them from the Baldron Horde? I have a plan, Azdaya. Trust me. Now fly. Fly, you fools! Okay. And now we must retrieve the bones of a Mithras by destroying the big castle. Beware, the Baldron Horde is chasing you, and you have ten minutes till the Horde arrives. So, alrighty then. So there's a bunch of other little castles here that you can destroy to give you more time. And you can see, oh shit. And you can see the red things on the map are dragons that are currently following you already. So, 
we are going to just try to go straight to the castle and blow it up because that takes a lot of time. Uh, last time I did this though, I was able to beat it in about five minutes, which is half the time it takes for the whole level. So I think I got lucky on that though. So we'll try this here. Yep, it's over here. Hello. Okay. One thing is that there's a power buff floating around here. Yeah, it's right there. Although, when the dragon, this like shadow dragon dude, puts his wing down like that, you can't see it anymore. So, half the time, I didn't even know it was there. There we go. Okay. So, that would be one thing. Um, you'd probably want to fix when the shadow dragon thing puts his wings down it covers up that buff and you can't see it anymore um, So I flew around for a while not even knowing where it was at so That took out that, that took out a good chunk of the damage. So really Ideally what I originally thought was the best way to kill this was to use your charge attack thing um, But if you just kind of sit here and fly around and spam your fire it is way more effective It seems like it does way more damage it's, it, it is pretty realistic. If you attack the top of towers, it hardly does any damage. If you attack them at the base, though, they crumble, like, pretty quick. Which is awesome that there's that kind of physical realism with it, where... Oh, excuse me. Okay, I'm, like, flying to the ground right now. So you can see I'm destroying this pretty quick if you just attack the base of it. Try to aim at like the top of the tower. It will it'll take a lot longer to try to kill it. Okay, I'm actually about to die. We're gonna go get some get some trees. Oh god! Oh, it's gonna be close. Those trees will kill your life. So you burn trees, and you die like that. And occasionally, trees will drop buffs too because they're your fallen enemies. So, who doesn't like destroying trees for the glory of uh, of of Stuff. Ooh, that's a good one shot this. Oh, just about. Yeah, oh yeah, I think we did we throw that from the car. Oh yeah, look at that. That's not good. Oh and I'm gonna fry that dragon right there too. Oh, oh, oh crap. Okay. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh fly up. Okay, here we go. on the base there. You can see it crumbles way faster than if you just try to hit it from the top. So that's the that's the main way to take out towers as I've learned. Okay, burn some trees, get our health back. There we go. Okay, we're good. And now we will fly back in there. There you go, that just falls right apart right there, look at that. Uh, yeah, there we go, take that apart. Get that one up next. So power. I am like doing some pro navigating here. I'm just Inside the tower, inside the castle. Okay, we're gonna wanna. This one's still up. Oh man, that freaking that part of that rod just landed on my head. The goal here is to just blow up this entire castle here. Just melt this thing. Yeah. Take that 
have this one. That's it, we're done. Did it. Boom. Did it in five minutes. That's that's actually a new record for me. That's the fastest I've done it. <coughs> and he grabs the bones real quick and then he takes off like a beast. So that at the moment is all there is right now in the game. Um let's go back into the level. I think that's some of like the dragon combat and everything. So I actually have a dragon right here already following me. This guy. So you can try to like you can just fight him kind of normal here. Just burn him down. But if you're on the controller and you're using the uh, uh, use the right bumper, you can actually lock on. I think I took him out actually. No, he's up there. Okay. So you can lock on, and that actually slows down time while you're doing that. You can see he's flying a lot slower and gives you time to just kind of freaking annihilate him right there. And then you let go of time, or you let go of it, and time speeds back up. And then you go do it again, and time goes back. Boom, and there it is. So you can take him out just like that. So, and I find that to be interesting that when you lock on the guys, it slows down time. Because I I believe the lore that they're going for this is that all dragons are descendants of Ver, um, Vermithorax. That's what his name is, I don't, I don't remember. Um, and he was able to control time. So if that's like a cool little lore standpoint that, you know, you still have some of that power too. And when you're locking on, you slow down time because he was able to. I don't know. Maybe it's just so it can, you can kill dragons easier. But if that's like, like if that was the reasoning behind it, why time slows down when you lock on, then that's really freaking badass. We'll see if we can snipe this guy. So I'd wait for my power to go back up. Um, oops. We'll charge this up. Get closer so we can lock on them. Oh, I missed. Damn. Let's see if we can get him again right here. Boom! And there it is. More. Very nice. So, but yeah, like the, like it said in the lore thing, where there's like fire, ice, lightning, all that, like that would definitely be freaking cool if they put in, you know, different breeds of dragons, and the one we have now is your standard fire dragon, but yeah, put in, oh man, put in one that does ice, and like, make it so that he can, he could, like, he shoots out, you know, like an ice thing, like make it so that every dragon has the same two attacks, they have the fire thing and they have the, the ice thing. But it's damage, so he shoots out like an ice ball, and when it's fully charged up, rather than it doing damage, have it like freeze the tower or part of a tower, and then archers from that can attack. Because I've got to admit, it is pretty hard to kind of take out a tower when you're sitting there getting nailed over and over by looks like hundreds of archers. So you know, people could be the ice dragon, and instead of having more destructive power, um, make it so that their ice ball that they shoot out, like a fully charged ice ball, will freeze part of a tower. Uh, for a limited amount of time, not permanently, maybe for like a minute, we'll say. And if you wanted to, you could, you know, go up to a tower, freeze the whole thing, you know, each piece at a ow, jeez, this guy, uh, each piece at a time, and then that would let you, you know, make it easier to beat the mission, um, which it would obviously take you longer because your dragon does less destructive power than the fire one, whereas, you know, the fire one could just go in blazing and take it out in no time, but use the ice one for a more safer strategy we'll say and be able to freeze the tower and then he can use his ice breath to take it apart that way um 
and have the lightning one do something different. I don't know. Maybe maybe have the lightning one specific to where if you get if you manage to hit with your lightning fireball or your lightning ball, uh, it'll stun whatever it'll stun a dragon that it hits. So like make it so that the the fire one is really good for taking out you know um, like buildings and stuff and everything. They can destroy those super fast. The ice one's really good for, like, disabling them, you know, he can freeze towers and everything like that. And then make the lightning one really good for, like, straight dragon on dragon, like, PvP kind of combat. Where the dragon will excel at that. And then, uh, man, if they could add in, like, multiplayer and do group missions and have, like, each dragon has their own role, you know, you'd need, you'd want to go into a mission with, like, an ice, a fire, a lightning dragon, so lightning dragon would cover you guys in the air. The fire, the lightning, or the ice one would disable it. Uh, the tower, and then the uh, uh, the fire one would just go in after everything's been disabled and just blow everything apart. That'd be freaking cool. Which I know, I'm pretty sure from a lore standpoint, you're only supposed to have this one dragon that's Gaia and uh, <coughs> whatever, but I don't know, make it some like multiplayer DLC or something. Like, I would totally spend money on that. That would be freaking sweet. Um... But that's just some that's just a concept idea I got for it with with in the lore as soon as I heard that, you know, there's different types of dragons, fire, ice, and lightning, I was like, okay, you can go you can do amazing things with just that concept itself. And I'm dead. Cause that the dragons start to really lock onto you. You gotta later on, like when you get like an elite threat coming after you, they they do not let up. They are pretty hard to um, <coughs> One other thing, also, just just when I was first playing this, I kept dying a lot. This would be really cool. If when you died, you didn't go straight back to the menu, and then have to sit here and wait for this to pull back up, and then have to go to skip to start playing again. It'd be cool if as, if as soon as you died, there was just like a retry button, and you could just go straight back into the game. That's that's like a small thing, I don't mind, you know, waiting because it's cool seeing the dragon take off, and the skip thing doesn't take that long. But just for some people, you know, just for casual people that are trying to, you know, play the game for a little bit and don't want to have to do all that. If, as soon as you died, you just put in retry and could just start the mission over rather than going back to the main menu and everything. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much, this is uh, Dragon Flight's the game so far. I am definitely loving it and I really can't wait to see where this game goes. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. This was recorded live on my Twitch at Dante Fido 4 and we'll be uploading it to my YouTube here, Dante Fido. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. 